Today, mm -hmm. we're talking about... Remarketing. Remarketing, my favorite topic in the whole wide world. Dude, remarketing is the unsung hero <laughs> of marketing. Um, it's just a, such a, it's an amazing, sensitive topic that is, it's absolutely needed. What I mean by that is we want to be very uh, specific about how long we want to remarket these users. For e-commerce, uh, it's actually really fun. We're gonna build a YouTube remarketing campaign. I think that this is, um, this is the unsung hero. Video partners on Display Network. This is Google's greed kicking in. This is why it's the you versus Google. Welcome to the ultimate guide for Google Ads for 2023, part two. I don't know, I'm doing my hands. <laughs> this, is, this is actually four, really. It's part four. Yeah. No, it's, it's actually part two. Yep. Part two. <laughs> and uh, last time we talked about uh, building a search campaign for brand specifically. We also talked about mm -hmm. standard shopping. Today, mm -hmm. we're talking about... Remarketing. Remarketing, my favorite topic in the whole wide world. Dude, remarketing is the unsung hero <laughs> of marketing. Like, the fact that people treat this as an afterthought mm -hmm. it's a tragedy yeah. it's basically free conversions remarketing costs you the <laughs> least and it produces the most yeah and there's a double-edged sword there too because you can over remarket and really drive up your cost for acquiring a customer or repeat customers and that you never become profitable on um or you don't see any click attributed conversions and you're not measuring your overall MER. And then when you stop remarketing, your ROAS looks better, but then your overall company starts to die off. Um, it's just a, such a, it's an amazing sensitive topic that is, it's absolutely needed. Like we cut our cost for acquiring a customer in half when we started doing heavy video remarketing for, for Solutions 8. It was, it was fantastic. But yeah, I love how casually you said, and then your your business starts to die off. It's no big deal. Yeah. Well, it's funny because that's uh that's what we're seeing with um we shot a video called uh that's in performance max, uh is performance max right for your business. And we have use cases where you can have a 2500 you know row as if remarketing is done right, or you can pay for your existing customers every time, which you'll just kill your business. So it's really, really sensitive to how and who you're targeting and how much you're spending on it. And I think that's where that's where the magic lies is performance max is amazing for retargeting. It is amazing. If you have low LTV and if you have a higher AOV, it is, you know, a machine that just runs. If you have lower AOV, but your LTV is fantastic, like kind of, you know, $15, $30 items, but they buy it every three to six months, then too much marketing would look good but then start to eat into your profits. And I think it's a really simple formula that every ads manager, business owner, whomever you are, if you're in business, you you may have not have thought about this, but it's something you can't deny. If it costs you $25 to get a conversion and it's a $50 product, you make a 2X return. Good. Now, if your remarketing is getting a $13 cost, required, or cost per, per acquisition CPA and you're still making let's say $50 because uh, second purchase or maybe even the first purchase. If it's too heavily skewed towards repeat customers, which a lot of times it is Pmax, a lot of times it is, <clears throat> your ROAS always looks good. It's like $15 to make you know, 50. So it's a little bit over a 3X return. Looks really good. But let's say you have a $50 product, but that $50 product has a 50% profit margin. Now you're, now you're making $25. Well, if you're spending $13 to $15 to make that $50 sale again, and you're only making $25 in profit, you've taken your $25 profit margin of repeat value and just took $15 right off the top. So now you have a $10 uh, profit. Mm. ROAS looks good, but you've cut your profit in more than in half and you'll do that forever. <clears throat> it's a similar so, problem with brand. You're just mm -hmm. paying for traffic you would have gotten otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why Performance Max always looks really good on those return customers is because they usually get a inbound brand click for, you know, a dollar or a display remarketing click for 48 cents. So ROAS, I mean, 48 cents at a $50 sale, ROAS is amazing there. But that's where when you take a deeper look into remarketing, segmenting your audiences and also segmenting out um, your customers and also potentially using a um, customer audience that is going to be a little bit tighter uh, from the from the subscription into that audience is going to be really good. We'll we'll talk about all that today. Let's do it. I'm excited. Cool. It's funny, man. I feel myself getting nervous because I, I you know I can't tell you how many times I've like 
been on stage or shot a video and I'm like, you absolutely have to bid on brand. You absolutely have to run remarketing. <laughs> and, but there's, there's nuances to it too. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's the golden mean, it's the middle way. Yeah. It's yes, you have to do those things, but you also still need to be careful with them. You know, there's, mm-hmm. there's, there's viability to both points. Absolutely. There's, there's never not a reason to run a campaign. That's what I've always learned is there's never not a reason to run it. But what you'll do is you'll find out how to manipulate that campaign to the best of your own personal business situation. Like, do you run brand? Absolutely. Just never over what you need to. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's like, well, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, so it's always, it's always an, a, a moving target. And then you throw seasonality and new products into competitors in there and you got to start all over again. And that's why we're here. That's right. That's why agencies exist. All right, let's dive into it. How do we build a remarketing campaign? Awesome. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, talk about um, audience segmentation. So I'm actually going to go into our own channel here for a moment. We're opening the kimono. Yes. Kimono or Komodo? I think it's kimono. I think Komodo, kimono is the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so let me do this here. Um, I'm going to mid journey right now and I'm asking for a Komodo in a kimono. <laughs> I love AI. I, I'm so excited to what AI can do. I'm, I'm super excited. A lot of people are nervous <clears throat> for a record. I don't think AI is ever going to necessarily, uh, fully replace job positions that aren't work kind of already replaceable right now, but I do think, um, that they're going to be very much supplemental um it's it's pretty cool <clears throat> so here's what i wanted to to share with you um inside of google ads i like google ads because right now in the time that i'm shooting this which is january uh 2023 ua is being moved away ga4 is coming out um this year as a standard i don't want to make a 2023 guide with that transition because UA is going away, even though I favor it more. So I normally do this in UA. And if you're if you're a Google Ads manager right now at this time, you're already you already know how to create an audience um in UA. That's still my favorite. The problem is that goes away in June, potentially. Mm. They might there's talks about them pushing it next year, but I don't want to put that in the guide here. And I don't want to do GA4 because I'm missing those audience members, even though match rates are 100 percent I'm missing half of them. So I don't want to use that as a guide here as well. So what I'm going to do is give us a, a sort of blueprint. <clears throat> and that blueprint is going to be applicable to whichever way that you can craft this audience in this time that you're watching the video. So I'm in a little bit of a, a, uh, a transition mode, but I think the theory still hold water, whichever method that you use to create UA, GA4, Google ads, audiences, et cetera. So take that with what you can and manipulate it to your, your end user situation. Um, if you're in the EU and you have privacy restrictions, it's going to be a little bit different for you. If you're in California or whatever it may be, but I still think that these um, guidelines, this blueprint is is correct. So in, in 2023, we're kind of at an impasse. Um, there's many different ways that you can start to create an audience that you can start to remark it to. GA4 is going to be the standard in June, potentially. There is talks that Google will be pushing it out another year, but it really all depends upon how urgent they need to get the privacy uh, situation figured out uh, with third party cookies. So even though this is first party cookies, the methodology or the, the methods to which you are going to be able to create these audiences may change in 2023 as you watch this video. So I'm going to use the Google ads tag just because it seems to be fairly Switzerland right now. It's not going to be susceptible to the UA GA4 switchover. And you can still do, you know, a really, really, really good job of tagging these audiences. And it's in, within Google ads. So it's very safe. But the blueprint that I'm going to share with you as to kind of best practices or things that you're going to want to um you're going to want to follow whether you use UA and then you have to change over in June, or if you use GA4 and you're not experiencing any double event issues that they're experiencing now, or you use this method here. But it's it's still, I think, good things to think about uh, rather than just tagging all visitors. So <clears throat> first one I want to do is uh, add to cart. And the one of the things I wanted to share with you and something that I see quite often is uh, an over attribution of the uh, uh, tagging for these users and and kind of just a catch all, which uh, we want to refine that. Um, what I mean by that is we want to be very uh, specific about how long we want to remarket these users. That's not really controlled inside of the campaign. Typically, <clears throat> inside of a campaign for like GN or any sort of marketing, you're going to 
uh, set a frequency cap sometimes. That's what people do. They're like, ah, you know, I don't want to be in too intrusive. If they see my ad five times and then they and then they don't uh, click on it, maybe maybe that's good enough. Mm. And that combats the bidding strategy because the bidding strategy says this person is taking a little bit longer, but I need to keep following up on them. But if you say, no, 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 bidding strategy, you can, you have to stop at five. And you kind of cut it off at, at its knees. Essentially you, you, you stop it from, from doing its job. The bidding strategy will do the exposure to the person um, frequency capping, you know, it, it, you're, it's sort of arrogant. It's like, so you know the exact time that this person is going to need to see this in order to convert. And you know, it's going to take less than five. <laughs> it's like, what if that, you know, the next, next three, when they were talking to their spouse or their partner, whatever it may be, and they're trying to decide and you're now gone, like they'll never see you again. It's just, it's kind of interesting. Um, so what I'm thinking that we see, or so what I, what I like to do and what my, in our thinking here is if I have an add to cart item, the first thing you want to do is check your timeline. How long does it usually take before a person sees an ad until they convert? Sometimes that's like, you know, eight days, sometimes it's 22. Uh, it just depends on the specific time lag. And the way to find time lag, uh, because I think this is going to be good for everyone to see, is your time lag is going to be your sales cycle. It's it's really nice to see how long it takes for a user to see an ad and then actually convert. This is also why conversion tracking is really important and you're only following the right conversion tracking. Because if you're looking at conversion tracking, and we got to we'll have this blurred out because this is our account here um, down the bottom, but that blue line is the only thing I wanted to share with you. But the uh, the time is extremely important because this is when this is what's going to tell you how long you should be remarketing to someone. In our account here, it takes twenty days after a person starts to see, and we're heavy in YouTube, so it makes sense. Um, it takes twenty days after an impression, so when they start seeing our YouTube ads, for your conversion data to be reported. And I only count the conversions I want to see. I do not count, um, you know, a stay longer than two minutes on our website. That's not a conversion. That's activity. It's not a conversion. It's it's a it's a, you know, it's a false conversion. So look at the conversion that you actually want. When you look at the conversions that you want, this will tell you of the conversions you're trying to get. Here's how long it takes. That's why conversion tracking to important metrics are very important. So 20 days. Excellent. So let's just say that that was my add to cart. 20 days. So I'm going to use visitors of a web page, for example, and web page, bit, web page visits in the last, let's say, 30 days. Okay. Can I ask a I mean, question real quick about that timeline? Sure. So that 20 day time delay is based off of Google's attribution, but we know, you know, I mean, we've kind of been bitching about it this entire time that their attribution windows are flawed. So should you extend that by a reasonable percentage just to give yourself some padding or yeah. because Google can't see it anyway, it sort of doesn't matter. No, you can, you can absolutely extend it. Um, that's going to be the average. Now, where were the specific uh, goal for your company will depict, will, will choose that. So for example, if an average is 20, it could be as low as one day or it could be as high as 40. What you're going to have to understand though, is that you're going to pay, especially in YouTube remarketing, you will pay no matter if they click or not. Mm. So if you say most of them or the average is 20, if you do 20 and you capture 80% of the conversions, you could have a remarketing CPA of let's say $10. I'm just gonna use round numbers. But if you extend it out to 40, you may have you know 20% more conversions, but now your $10 CPA went up to 18 because you have a lot more people that are really disinterested further out that are not engaging with the ads that you're paying for if your audience size doubles. So you have to find that timeline to which you are going to want to remarket smartly, or you can also go back and start to increase it and see how your CPA reduces if you start to go too far out in your in your targeting. Mm. Today, we're in a very, and I see this actually, the timeline really moving in the opposite direction, <clears throat> meaning that there's, it seems to be uh, a shift in the last about one to two years. It was really Amazon, in my opinion, that we are in a very instant gratification type of type of world. We've been there for probably a decade, but it's just in Google ads, it seems to be that we, we remark for three days and it's actually cheaper to get a new conversion than it is to bring an uninterested person back and convince them after a week after they said no. So it's, yeah. So it's kind of interesting where it, you can spend dearly trying to convince that person that you'll never see and never talk to, but you're delivering your message to them and hope that they say, well, you know what, gosh, darn it. You, you got me like, <laughs> or, you know, it might be cheaper to just, just show up for the person that is like, Hey, I'm, I actually want to buy your product, you know? If it think of it like your sales, um, sales pipeline, or even a salesperson, 
if you're a salesperson, you have two people that are in front of you. And one says, I don't really know. I'm going to think about it. And they leave. And the other person comes in and says, I, I, yeah, I agree to that price. Who would you talk to? That's kind right. of the scenario. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's that's what we have to kind of manipulate is your timelines. And that's what I think is really important. Most often, people will take a web page visit. And I'll refine an action page URL contains, um, let's just say, forward slash cart. Let's just call that here. Or you have a tag um, of add to cart. Um, whatever it may be, well, however you're going to use your um, use your actions to tag them, page visit, cart. You can even use an event like people that have an add to cart trend, uh, add to cart conversion tag. Lots of good ways that you can actually start to uh, build this audience as a segment. But if you say people that have visited in 30 days, uh, and they say and um, the web page visit, but uh, page URL does not contain or slash, you know, success, if this is your thank you page here, what you're looking at is building an audience of people that have added an item to the cart, but did not um, go to the uh, success page. So they didn't buy. Make sure that you do this. People will not do this for some reason. Then they'll extend this out to, I think 90 days is the first we can do this. And then they'll pre-fill it with a uh, pre-fill the segment in the fi- uh, for 30 days. Or I think the max that you could do is 540. I've seen this a lot of times. Um, if I do 550, will it tell me no? Yeah, so 540. So 540, so they'll put everyone that's added an item to the cart for 540 days. They'll backfill it for 30 days. They won't exclude the converters. And now you're paying for everybody who is bought from you and not bought from you in the last, you know, basically year and a half and is no longer interested. So this, don't just try to say, hey, I'm just going to capture everyone to add the cart and I'm just going to hit them. You're going to pay for that even if they don't click, if you're running, let's say, a YouTube remarketing. So that's why the timelines are important. My time lag is 20 days. I'd probably start at 30 days. So in the past 30 days, if you add an item to the cart and you didn't buy, um, I'll backfill it for the past 30 days so my campaigns can start now. But if you have a three-day time lag, maybe you're only doing this for seven days. So it just depends on how how you want to have this audience subscription uh, be include be included in a duration. This means once eight days lapses, these people are out of our remarketing audience. I'm not going to remarket anymore. I want the last seven days of add to carts that didn't buy. And you can make sure that you can say, you know, add to cart last seven days. This is fairly standard practice with a lot of good agencies or good advertisers, but I wanted to kind of give just a, a guide to 2023 that this is something that you should be doing because you're going to pay for it. Um, let's do uh, let's do the other ones. So that's, that's I would say, the bulk majority of building out an audience. You could do add to carts, begin checkouts. You could have people that of uh, your lead generation looked at you know your landing page your contact us page um your home page but also didn't check out so you make sure that they're they have some purchase intent or some some sales intent there um i keep harping on uh the fact that conversion paths are important you need to understand your conversion path um of your of your users your buying journey you could use it with third party attribution tool you could use it with heat mapping and screen recording software you can even use it with Google Analytics of the behavior paths. Um, so everybody has this right now, the behavior paths, like, okay, when people hit the landing page, where do they go? You can, and then only filter the ones that have converted. Where do these people most often go? Really, really, really know your conversion paths. Um, because if you don't, you're going to guess and then spend someone else's money on your guess. You know, if there's tools available for you. You can use that. So I think that that's important uh, is, is building those audiences. Hopefully GA4 is, is awesome this year and you can simply apply those those rules there. <laughs> Another John. What's that? You don't sound convinced. <laughs> what we uh I had a Google rep when we we're missing conversion says, hey, we can open up a ticket, but just wait, we're just wait for GA4. I said, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> They're like, we're fixing it. I said, all right, cool. So Google's just like, yeah, we know it's broken. Um the other part too, I think is is important is um if you look at your average bounce rate. Uh, your average bounce rate is sometimes 60 to 70% on paid traffic. On the low ends, 40, 50, on the high ends, 80. There's no right or wrong answer for bounce rate. It's really, really uh, important to know who your audience is. And if you're trying to go really, really, really cold traffic with a content pivot, like, I know you're looking for this, or maybe just this, but have you seen that? Like, you know, that's going to be a higher bounce rate. That's okay. One thing that I would say, though, as a good rule of thumb, 
is whether you're using UA or GA4, exclude the people that have stayed less than 10 seconds. That'll mm -hmm. cut about half your audience size out. The people that have only stayed nine and seconds and below or 10 seconds and below means that they bounced. They got to the page and said, nope, and then they left. Um, you don't want to pay for those people because you're going to show them YouTube ads or you're going to show them display ads and your audience size is going to be potentially double. You think about it. If half, if your bounce rate is on low end at 50% means half those users are not interested. Do not remarket them. Mm. Don't just include them in your, in your audiences. So you can save half your ad spend on remarketing. You can cut your, uh, your CAC down. You can increase your, your MER, your media efficiency ratio by simply not spending on un uninterested parties. So it's a good practice. How much of it are you customizing on a content basis? Like, for instance, let's say we have, just to make it binary, we have a lead generation service page and an e-commerce service page for Solutions 8. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's interested in Google Ads for lead gen, they go to page one. If somebody's interested in Google Ads for e-commerce, they go to page two. Mm -hmm. How much do you find yourself customizing, retargeting based off of intrinsic qualification of content engagement? E-commerce more often than lead gen. Um, I, th I think that's also a byproduct of the clients that we take. Um, in my opinion, Google ads is not going to work very well for lead generation if you don't have a very clear offer mission statement service. Now you're going to have different services that you can offer. And that's where you'd say, well, like an, an attorney, if someone's going on the family law page, I'm not going to show them an ad for, um, you know, building a will or an accident injury case. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to, you want to have your messaging targeted to those users um, based on their activity or even the users who have clicked on a specific ad because, the targeting and the keywords in those specific ads are going to be relevant. So definitely want to make sure that your, your ads are um, relevant to how they found you and where they went. Very little do you have a person that's like, I need an accident injury attorney. And then they get to your site like, oh, I also need a divorce. Like, <laughs> you know, that's not going to happen. It could have been the accident. You don't know. It could be. <laughs> it depends on who hit him. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that's a, that's a, that's a really good, um, good use case. Um, the add the carts usually are pretty, pretty safe. Um, and I'll actually share with you, uh, one of the reasons why I like, um, why I like add to carts free commerce and how you actually manipulate that. But the other part, excuse me, but the other part for lead generation is, yeah, make sure that you're, you're segmenting your audiences based on the services. Now for, for solutions eight, we're a Google ads agency. All of our remarketing is going to be relevant. I don't know the exact specific pain point that they're experiencing. But if I put enough ad content out there, remarking them by proving to them that we know what we're doing, kind of like this, hmm. you know, uh, <laughs> then- That way we hope... make these videos? Hey, customers? Uh, yeah. there's, there's an ulterior motive here. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's what's good is you can really, you know, I think you can, you can set yourself apart uh, in many different ways and not necessarily try to pick and choose the pain point that you know they're experiencing unless you have a landing page dedicated to it. And then you're tagging that page, page visitors of, you know, divorce and went to the contact page and did not reach the success page. Perfect. Now I have an audience built right for, you know, divorce attorney. Great. For e-commerce, uh, it's actually really fun. We're going to build a YouTube remarketing campaign. I think that this is, um, this is the unsung hero. The YouTube remarketing is, doesn't suffer the fattiness that I think display suffers, um, Display is is a good it's a good network, but there is a lot more bot clicks even in remarketing because the bot clicks also hit your site, and the good part about it is bots don't really watch YouTube videos, so it's nice. Um, you know, I'm not going to be hitting a remarketing bot on YouTube if I'm trying to identify an audience on YouTube. I will pay for each one of my videos if it went longer than ten seconds and they didn't skip the ad. I'm going to pay for that video. And to the be good, clear, with display remarketing, generally speaking, you don't pay, pay unless they click. Right. Bots so click that's the them. balance of risks there is YouTube is pay to play no matter what. And remarketing is effectively free brand awareness building, which I really like until they click. But to the point that you're making, a lot of those clicks are superfluous because yeah. they're bot based. Yeah. Or you get the people that are like kind of apps and kids games. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's the other part, too, is is YouTube. Um, you can you can remove uh the video from being shown uh on apps and you know kids games and websites you know they make that more robust from an exclusion perspective that's it, that's really short-sighted 
Yeah, well, we actually had to hack uh, how to get that out. Um, so in order to remove um, the, and I'll drop this here just as a, for fun, in order to remove the audiences um, that are not, actually, let me just do this. I'll pull up a notepad for everyone here. This is what you have to exclude in placements. So I'll make this a little bit bigger because this is going to be, you know, the guide. And I think everyone should, should see this. Um, but Google doesn't allow you to remove apps and kids games. The, oops, the apps and kids games here. I was going to save it here. I, was, I don't know why that didn't really work for me. I'm not really good at notepad. But this here, the Google AdSense without YouTube. What this basically means is when you exclude this placement, YouTube ads will not run on apps and display. It will only run on YouTube. Google does not allow you to remove that. This will allow you to remove that. So where display is going to show on apps, kids games, and you're going to have to exclude those placements manually every day when they come in at a thousand per day. And then hopefully over time, your bidding strategy and your activity and your exclusions will be removing those, those irrelevant audiences. This does it right off the bat. Unless you're physically a person on YouTube watching a video, you will not see my pre-roll ad. Mm. So it saves you a whole bunch of money. And the best part about YouTube ads too is on average for remarketing, it's about one to two pennies per view. Very inexpensive. So if I have a really hot audience where it's like people that looked at this product and then added it to the cart and did not buy, and I have a video about that product and I can include a feed, but with the with an asterisk, you could have you have to have a minimum of four uh, products in order to do remarketing with a feed, but I digress. But unless I know that that has happened and you're a person physically on YouTube right now, I'll pay a penny to get back in front of you. Absolutely. Mm. It's a it's a very very targeted very effective uh effective bidding strategy or sorry a very effective uh marketing model, and the best part about this is when it's set up correctly and I'm just gonna give us here um one 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 shot of uh, proof because I think that this is important to see when it's set up correctly it is extremely effective and I'm gonna take a client account we're gonna have to blur it out uh, a bit but I'm just gonna share this with us here or share this with you with you all here. I'm running a campaign that I'm scaling uh, inside of Google ads and standard shopping. We already know that attribution is very, very, very terrible, but um, well, let's just do this. I'm going to, I'm going to share screen uh, on this other client account. Where we'll have to blur it out, but here's what happens is uh, hopefully this is easy to blur my standard shopping. Um, what I did is I increased it by 162%. My YouTube remarketing did not spend any more money. I made 64% more conversions. So I made 12. I spent $137 to make 9.29, but off of this, off the standard shopping people here, because everyone I missed there started funneling to here. Great. You know, it's just however you want to attribute it, Google, that's fine. Um, but inside of here, my my YouTube remarketing to spend 137 to make 9.29. Here's the best part. See how there's 12 conversions here? This is last week. There's 12 conversions. I got 23 clicks. That is a 50% conversion rate on YouTube remarketing. Um, it is, it is amazing. And my cost per view, by the way, here, um, is eight cents per view. Dude, that's so, unbelievable. Yeah. So it's very inexpensive. And what's nice is you don't pay per click. If you have a penny per view and it takes 10 views in order to get a click, you have a 10 cent cost per click. That's how, that's how cost per click is in YouTube is how often is a person going to click on your ad based on how many times it takes for them to see it. And then you multiply the amount of views and the cost per view by, um, by one click. And that's your cost per click. So <clears throat> it can be really effective because it's cheap, it's relevant, and that is a captive audience with, and, and I guarantee you, no one has a 50% conversion rate on YouTube. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, unless they're running really hyper-targeted remarketing to a good audience. That showed intent first. So let's build one. Um, I'm going to run a uh, YouTube ad. Uh, so I'm actually going to, here's the bad part. Even in 2023, Google still locks us into uh, specific conversion-based bidding, or conversion bidding strategies. Uh, sorry, conversion-based bidding strategies, I should say, depending upon your objective. I hate it so much. Um, like if I'm looking for like website traffic um, in here and I'm going to use video, I can drive conversions. If I'm looking for a campaign without a goal guidance and I'm using video and I want a sequence, for example, it's like, aha, gotcha. You want conversions? Well, you're not going to get them. Hmm. You know, following bidding strategies aren't available. Maximize conversions, maximize conversion value, T-Rose. There's very good reason for this. I just hate it. 
The very good reason, though, is, uh, oh, no, hopefully I don't. There you go. Got it. Didn't have to blur that one out. Um, the reason why this is it's good is because when you build an ad sequence, for example, um, and it's important to choosing the, the campaign objective, and that's why this is a guide. When you're choosing your campaign objective, you're choosing if you want to leverage the Google tool, machine learning, the algorithm, the, the Google ecosystem as to which can help you. You're choosing if you want to use it or not. When you create a sequence, for example, in YouTube, even if it's remarketing, still could work. If you've heavily defined your audiences and you don't care for Google's automated targeting of who they think is going to buy and who's not, you can use a sequence and say, every person that is in this audience, I need to show them these three ads in these in, in a row where it's, hey, here's why it's good to buy from us. Um, check out all the, the testimonials from our amazing customers and a 10% off for using this discount code. I don't know. Maybe you're just going to build that, you know, remarketing sequence. You can use that, but you're going to pay per view. That's okay. You're saying, hey, this audience with this message, Google's like, so I can't, I can't show which ad first, which ad second. I, I can't mix the match. I can't only show one. I can't increase the frequency. You're like, no, no, no. I got it. Okay. It's like manual. You can run it, but you're going to run it manually. You cannot set up that situation and ask Google, okay, find me the people that need to see these three videos in a row and then buy and maximize that conversion. You're you're setting up the algorithm for, for failure because it's not going to know your three custom videos because it doesn't know how the people are reacting to it and then adjusting it. You don't allow people to react and Google to adjust, which is the algorithm. So it makes sense, but you just need to know that if you want those conversions um, to be optimized by Google, you have to choose an, a conversion-based bidding strategy like sales or leads. So I'm going to use sales, I'm going to use purchases, I'm going to use video, it's going to default to drive conversions, which is good. And you still have the difference in, in your conversion-based bidding strategy a little bit. You can maximize conversions, you can target cost per acquisition, but that's it. You don't get maximized conversion value, you don't get target ROAS. Um, you can uh, after enough data, but starting off, if you're building this new, you will not be able to do it. It needs, I think, at least 20 conversions um, per month, and then sometimes one to two months before that that is uh, is identified. So we're going to call this YouTube uh, YouTube remarketing. And then uh, this is up to you. If you sell worldwide, if you have, let's say, five campaigns that are producing products. Um, you have five different feeds associated in five different countries. You can use all countries and territories. That's okay. Or you know wherever you want. This is all completely up to you where you want to remarket and sell your products or generate your leads. This part here, languages, now it's important. Remember brand campaign? We we said no. Um, in, in English, we just use all languages. This, you're going to want to choose English because this is going to um, focus the ads to English-speaking um, YouTube channels and English speaking people. I don't want to necessarily have a Spanish speaking ad to an English speaking person or vice versa. So whatever your language is in on your videos, choose that language here. Bidding strategy. This is, I actually like starting off with maximized conversions first. I have a refined audience. I know that audience has high intent. They search for a product. They found me, they added item to the cart and they haven't bought yet. In the last seven days, I'm going to saturate that audience because I'm paying one to two pennies usually per view until I start to crank it up or my audience gets too small and I need to, my repeat uh, frequency rate starts to go up and I pay too much for them, whatever. But I want to saturate it. I don't want to necessarily say yet, only choose the people that we know are going to buy. I need to find that first and refine it. So maximize conversions, we're going to saturate our high intent audience. Daily amount here, start low. Honestly, you don't really need a high amount of ad spend for remarketing. You can start with, you know, let's say $20, $25. That's good. If you think about it, if you have a penny per view and you have a thousand people, how much per day do you really need to hit all of those people? It's $10. It's not, it's not a lot of money. After this grows, if you're starting to scale, you know, think about if I want to hit these people one or two times a day. Yeah, 10 to $20. Perfect. You can hit a thousand people a day, twice a day for 20 bucks. Great. Uh, again, your your cost per view will vary, and that's where you need to dictate your daily ad spend. <laughs> so remember that little uh, remember that little code that we just had that Google AdSense without YouTube. Um, this is because Google doesn't allow you to do that anymore. 
So it says, hey, I'd like to appear in video partners on Display Network. This is Google's greed kicking in. This is why it's the you versus Google. Adding in the negative placements of Google AdSense underscore without underscore YouTube.com will allow you to stop showing here. This is display, and we've all seen this. You've always you've been on the homepage of your favorite news network, and then you see the ad playing in the corner on mute that you ignore because it's distracting. Um, that's what you're paying for, and you're paying per view. So Google will make money autonomously by paying playing a video on a page that you're on and just cross your fingers. Hopefully you're seeing that. You can't shut that off anymore. And that's where you spike up your YouTube remarketing spend is 70% irrelevant people. Now, if you're targeting your audience really refined, you're going to mitigate that risk. But if you want to re refine it and then say only when these people are on YouTube wasting time, mm, nailed it. Or maybe looking at reviews, looking at competitors, making their purchase decision. I want to be there. Especially if I'm going to be using a smaller budget, I'm going to make sure that they're hot and relevant. Content exclusions, we've already built uh, an audience, so we're not going to use content exclusions here. Um, the site links, again, fairly fairly simple. You know, Build your site links as, as to your, your best ability. Product feed, here's what's actually important here now. You can actually link a product feed. Um, this is just a client account here. You can link a product feed to your YouTube remarketing. This is really good because this is going to show dynamic ads. So for example, you're going to take a look at a, um, I was going to find something on my desk, a stapler. Cool. You sell staplers. You also sell pens. You also sell pencils. You also sell paper. You also sell printers. You sell everything. But I came to your site and I added a stapler to my cart. When I, when, when the advertiser shows you my YouTube ad, I'm going to have four staplers on my website that are next to you or ne sorry, next to me, uh, next to the YouTube ad, or if it's on mobile, it's going to be below the ad, but using a feed means that I can actually rope in products, um, next to my remarketing video and show you the product that is in your cart, ready to be checked out. And I, my YouTube video isn't necessarily going to be about staplers. You can, you can segment a ad group. For each one of your products, you could shoot a very specific video for each one of your products. You could build the audiences of only people that added a stapler to your cart. You can get really granular if you wanted to. Starting out, if you wanted, you can simply use a very, um, very good ad video that says, hey, I would really love if uh, it's like, I really love your business. We have the fastest shipping. We have the best customer service. We have the best prices. Amazon can't even touch us. We ship also as fast as they do for free. I'm just trying to earn your business as an online e-commerce e store. And I'm just using really generic ad copy, but right next to me is that stapler you wanted. So that's how you're building a feed along with a video and you can build it per video uh, per product or or because of a group of products, you have to have four. Just remember that if you add a feed, you have to have four products at a minimum. You cannot use just one product. So at least have four variations of what you're trying to get a purchase out of. But that that feed here is is can be really important and powerful. Devices, here's the other part that I would say is important. Change, not showing all eligible, set specific targeting for devices, remove TV screens. Your Your mileage may vary. <laughs> As I like to say, you may want to keep TV screens because it's amazing brand awareness, but I can guarantee you there's not a person that's going to see a five second pre roll ad that is going to keep watching it for the 30 second duration, find their clicker, go navigate your site, begin and, and next check out and buy. So, for a conversion based bidding strategy, TV screens do not convert. Good for placement, good for awareness, good for remarketing. They don't convert. Do you think this changes once the smart TVs really become more prolific? Because, I mean, they actually come with keyboards. You know, that seems to be the rate limiting step. Yeah, I would imagine it's almost like um, it's the same. It's going to be the same as mobile, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, when did it really when did when did people become mobile first in their development? It was like when in the United States, like 80 percent of the population had phones. Like smartphones. Yeah, wait, it's a good question. Is it to the tipping point? Because um You'd want to blame the iPhone for that, but I think even once the iPhone was the ubiquitous truth, most mo most websites weren't mobile first. So it was right. like this weird tug where you know the 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 internet brought us to the mobile, but then the mobile brought us to responsive, and then the webs became responsive, and then all of a sudden it was like, all right, now most of what we're doing is. I I still think it's interesting that 
there's a significant amount of our web experience that's not mobile. <laughs> not even mobile yeah. enabled. Like I, I, dude, I just signed up for Brandon Turner's mastermind yesterday and I used circle. So I'm not picking on Brandon. Brandon's a great guy. Go join his mastermind. He's awesome. But I'm, we're using circle, which is a community builder. And in order to build my profile, I had to be on a desktop. <laughs> the note from circle said, Hey, the profile builder is not enabled on mobile. And I'm like, Oh, that's a problem. You know? So <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I know it's a departure, but I think it's really interesting because I think that as smart TV becomes more prolific and it's dude, it's spreading like wildfire. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I think those ad placements are going to get real valuable, but I know what you're saying as far as it's tough for people to take action, yeah. you know? So, well, you know what I think is Google was smart though. And they just said, we're just going to enable it by default and not even going to tell you. Um, yeah. And over time, as mobile or sorry, as smart TVs become more prolific, you're just going to see your conversion rates get better. You know, that's OK. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a self-fixing item. You as an advertiser can control. Well, you know, depending on your offer, maybe you're offering something that is to a, you know, a lower AOV to a person that doesn't need to be very affluent and they don't have, you know, smart enabled TVs. And you're like, I am just not going to show it there. Um so it really depends on your audience, um, household income. And then if it's something that, you know, is more of an impulse buy, I'm not going to sell a $28,000 piece of medical equipment through your TV and be like, oh my gosh, finally, yeah, <laughs> grab, my, grab my keyboard. Well, dude, it's funny you brought that up because I've been meditating on this, this point a little bit since you started talking about remarketing. I think that your, your, your rules are very sound, obviously, but I think that for people in a really specific niche, like you brought up the $28,000 medical device. Like if I'm, if I'm selling something high ticket to a very specific niche, you know, like optometrists, for instance, there's only so many, there's 30,000 optometrists in the United States. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like a really, really, really narrow, narrow audience. Yeah. Part of me feels like, man, if you were on that page, I'm going the 540, you know what I mean? I'm going all 540 days and I want to just be in front of you and melt your face because it might end up being worth, especially if I'm maximizing my ad spend everywhere else, it might actually end up being worth sort of, you know, saturating the market, let's say. Absolutely. And that, I think, you know, what's interesting is you may, you bring up a really good point. Like you will want to spend without, without tracking those conversions. Um, mm. And that kind of brings us right back to that Mer uh, discussion too, where it's like, okay, even if that campaign shows a loss, um, our campaigns show a loss in remarketing at Google. But dude, the, I, all I yeah. hear people say is I see you everywhere. You won't stop right. following me around. All I do is see your face. I call myself right. digital herpes. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, what's funny for us. Like my cost per lead on YouTube is $4,000. If I look at Google ads hmm. in reality is 380, but it's 400. You know, what's really interesting about that is you just closed two six figure deals. One yesterday, one the day before both. Of the, no, one of them was referral, right? But one came from YouTube. One was a referral, but the reason why they wanted to talk to us is because our referral partner sent them our YouTube video. <laughs> okay. So, but it's not a, it's not a paid YouTube yeah, ad. Right. So we'll take that one off the ad. table. Yeah. But we paid $380 for a lead and we just got a six figure deal yesterday mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. of YouTube. Right. And that's, yeah. and that's, what's interesting is like my, uh, here, there's an interesting paradigm though, that I think that will, well, this is where we could digress a bit, but I won't. Your YouTube videos, if you're, let's say, marketing to an audience, not your remarketing videos, but your proactive videos, will do remarketing. So when I'm talking about specifically YouTube remarketing, this still, in my opinion, applies for a short sales cycle mm. because, and I'll, I'll actually pull up our ads account, and this is where um, this is where I think it also becomes very situational. Um, this will blow your mind. It blew, it blew my mind. If I look in, um, perfect. I'm going to share my screen here and check this out. This is where, this is where this gets deep. <clears throat> I'm going to look at conversion by conversion time. And this is just from November. Now there's a lot of ad spend here. There's $300,000 in ad spend here. This is, this is a lot. This is my proactive non-remarketing. This is my remarketing, but this is my proactive, the proactive account. When I sort descending by conversions, Every single time you see a split conversion, it means that a person saw this ad and another ad at least, mm -hmm. potentially five more, and then converted, whether they clicked or not. So YouTube Proactive for us specifically means Cosm could could be influenced by the 0.99, the 0.92, the 0.79. Check this out all the way down to 001, 001, 001, wow. 001. So when you say, hey, I'm the 540 melt your face, that's what this campaign does. Now, as soon as you make it to the website, you add it to cart and you're about to buy. This campaign though is still going after you. 
I haven't excluded those people. My remarketing campaign is going to be focused on converting those people is going to be hyper focused. So for us, like I'm an, I have 50 camp, 50, you know, videos that are melting your face. But if you add an item to the cart, this one's going to try to hunt you down and get you to convert, but you're still going to see both unless I exclude the add to cars to my prospecting. But I don't, because you see that I have videos that influence a person by 0.01 and 0.99. These people may have seen four or five or six videos even before they got to add the item to the cart. So it's definitely dependent upon what campaigns you're using for that saturation effect. Like you say, I see you everywhere. They may not even have made it to our site yet, but they're still going to mm. see us everywhere. So it's really cool stuff. And I, I love the I love the paradigm because it's because you may not be running heavy YouTube. And so your model of, OK, if you're not doing heavy prospecting, your remarketing should be doing kind of heavy prospecting, I guess, before they even buy. So, yeah, it's it's completely situational, which is really cool. Yeah, so it makes our job hard. I know <laughs> why people should pay us. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so yeah, that's uh for us, like that's that's exactly right. And if you're if you're running, let's say you know, heavy inbound shopping and you're like, hey, I have a $30 product, you probably want to be more selective. If you have a $30,000 product, open that thing up to 540, exclude your converters, and just you know, hit them as you know, much as you can. Your maximized conversions bidding strategy will pick up the slack and say, this person's 100 days old. He doesn't watch our videos anymore. She doesn't watch our videos anymore. Stop showing that ad to them. And that model absolutely works. It just depends on what you can afford to pay for that new customer. Mm. Cool. This is so much fun. I love this stuff. Um, I usually don't do operating systems, device models, networks. I don't really look at this at all. I'd usually just focus on TV screens if I need this, this campaign to start to convert. Um. Frequency capping, I don't use this. Uh, I use duration. I don't use frequency capping. I have a big problem with frequency capping. Do you have a difference of opinion? I hate frequency capping. No, I think it's stupid. Why would you? It's You already made this point, but it's like, are you smarter than the AI? You know, like yeah. Google thinks that you're going to, I don't know. <laughs> right. I think I'm the same way. Um, third-party measurement, if you have a uh, third-party vendor, you can you can attach it here. Um, ad group name, again. This is where it gets custom. Uh, we're talking about the structure. Here's the products. Now, if you, um, if I look at all products or specific products, you'll see here include at least four products is required. So if I wanted to choose a product on this page here, um, and I, I, it'll be blurred uh, so that we don't show our, our clients products here. But if I wanted to uh, sew specific products in this ad group, this is okay. If you're going to show in this ad group, and let's say I have you know staplers, I have to select at least four staplers. I can't choose one stapler. It won't work. This is not a glitch. I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you want to work with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google Ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com, that's S-O-L-8.com, to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm them so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. So if you're going to use a feed and if you're going to build a video for those products, you have to have at least four products. You can have four variations, which is kind of a neat workaround. Well, let's say you have a t-shirt and you have a small, medium, large, extra large. Boom. Now you got four products. <laughs> if you're including all your variations in your feed. John, have um, you ever done anything just like straight down middle of the lane the right way? Or is now, it always? <laughs> <laughs> now, I know how to break that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm just, I feel like the, uh, the Russian guy in Rocky. I'm like, I will break you. <laughs> <laughs> if he dies, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's your audience that you built. Go ahead and attach your audience here. Um, optimize targeting. Um, this, what's funny is you can opt out of this afterwards. Yes, do that. You're you're basically, and here's, here's the you versus Google again. Optimize targeting. Optimize targeting helps you get more conversions by using information such as your landing page and asset. You can speed up optimization by creating or adding an audience or opt out afterwards. Yes, opt out. It's a remarketing audience. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's all we'll talk about there. Uh, and then uh, from here, I'll, I'll just grab one of our videos. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, my, to to uh, oh, no, I got to find one of my videos. So to go to YouTube and type in one of the most handsome men in the world. 
All right, there we go. They pulled up us. Perfect. <laughs> uh, sorry, I interrupted you. Well, I was just apologizing because my smartwatch keeps going off, but I don't know how to stop it. So if people are hearing that little ding, just know that it's because I'm not smart <laughs> enough to know. More like dub watch, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, fun, fun. All right. Uh, so here is one of our YouTube videos here. Uh, ignore that. I have about three hundred thousand dollars in ad spend just this last few months. That shows that this is not actually, you know, always the case. Dependent upon your messaging and your offer and whatever it may be. So, if you have a longer a video that's longer than three minutes, but it is a product highlight video with testimonials and it has a really good quality and engagement. I don't mean good quality as in like, is your camera really expensive? I mean, it's just not like you know a shaky cell phone video that people are going to get nauseous watching. Um, so just make sure that if it's a good quality video, you can go four, five, six minutes. Not a problem at all. Um, we've had really, really good success with longer videos, more so than sometimes shorter videos, depending upon what you need to do. Mm. If a person's added an item to the cart and they're ready to check out, but they're not sure, take some time and really explain why you're the person that they need to buy from or hire, whatever it may be. Um, so I, you upload, you drop your video here, uh, the final URL, you know, whatever your whatever your web address is or whatever your pay product page is, this is going to be heavily dependent upon your situation. Um, you can send a uh, four item feed remarketing video back to sometimes a collection of pages. So don't necessarily need to send them back to the product page. You can also send them back to the group of pages. So if you have couches, leather couches, you can have, you know, solely.com forward slash, you know, leather dash couches, and you can have them choose their journey if they're still not decided yet. So you don't need to beat them over the head with the product that didn't buy. They didn't buy it for a reason just yet. So you can say, hey, I know you're interested in the leather couches and Adam that is in your cart right now. Have you seen all of our other leather couches? Mm. You know, so you can you can sometimes give them different variations. Again, I don't use display path. Um I think it's confusing and I think that it takes away from a brand name um, unless you want to have like something like, you know, couches for slash leather. Okay. You know, you can build a, a fake URL here. I don't know. I think, I hope this goes away soon. I really hate it. Um, call to action. Uh, this is actually going to be one of your most important uh, call to actions for, for social day for us, for example, we actually have a watch now um, because our ads run to the ad or sorry, to the video on our YouTube channel. Um, I don't, I don't tease you with a 30 minute video in the first 10 seconds. I'm like, here's how to do something and then send you to my webpage. You'd be like, well, I wanted to learn that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I usually use watch now, but again, you can have shop now, uh, you can have buy now, you can have book now. If you're trying to get this, you know, consultation, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do here. Um, so maybe just, you know, order now, um, headline. This is, I think important, um, in their headline, the headline isn't necessarily, um, uh, do this here. Hold on. Let me pause that. So your headline isn't here. It's really weird. Um, your headline is actually in. Uh, well, maybe see if I can get this to show. All right. Well, it's not really gonna. Uh, hopefully, if I just hit play, you'll see it here. But your 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 headline is actually after like where your call to action is. It's really odd. So it's actually not a headline. Your long headline and your description is also a little bit misleading. Long headline. Keep your long headline a little bit. Um, uh, shorter. So what I mean by that is like right now, this is the the title of the video is your long headline. So, um, you know, stop paying too much for ads. I'm just going to use a stupid example, but you'll see here, I'm only going to get, ugh, I'm only going to get this information here. I don't want to have a paragraph as my title. Mm. Make sure that it's short and distinct. You have 90 characters. Don't use them because it will run over to the point where it ends up in a, um, I'm not a bright man. What is the three dots called? An ellipsis. Ellipsis. Yeah. Ellipsis. ellipsis. Yeah. Um, so it'll end in an ellipsis. Um, and that's where you 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 know, be short, be distinct. It's a it's a video ad. I'm not gonna write a paragraph. I just that's you know, funny, try. man. This is the first time we've ever said don't occupy the entirety of the real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, so I have a caveat, and it's sure. if uh if you want to tease something without intentionally teasing it. So like the most amazing thing I've ever learned about Google ads <laughs> is, and then you just make sure that it runs right off. So they have to click the video or put, put dot, 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 just on yeah. purpose. <laughs> I ran out of room. Uh, I'm a horrible appetizer. <laughs>
Um, and then, and then your description, this is where, um, you know, this is where it could be a little, little bit more descriptive. Um, so I'm, I just chose one. I didn't even read yet. So like, stop paying too much. And I hear you can see how smart I am. Stop paying too much for ads. Work with a local expert to create a custom marketing plan. Got it. Like you want to be, you want to be distinct here. Again, you have five seconds just to capture their attention in the form of video. This is just going to reinforce those first five seconds, the 10 seconds to capture attention. If I said secrets to Google ads, success, stop paying too much for ads. All right, I'm, I'm listening. But if it's like secrets to Google ads success, which is how the video opened, and then my 90 character says, in this video, John Barad will tell you the ways that you can actually stop paying too much for a remark. Yeah. You're, you're, you want to watch that cat video, you're skipping. So a little bit more sizzle here in the ad copy. Let your video be the steak is what I like to call it. Uh, cool. And then you can create multiple hit create campaign and boom, you made a really dedicated YouTube remarketing campaign to a very hyper audience that is very, very relevant. Um, we, we just do it. What's that? That was it. That's it. That's creating a YouTube remarketing. Like when you well, can, why do we charge so much if that's all it takes? I know. Right. I mean, like, you know, it's just press the buttons on the screen, man. <laughs> It's not that hard. It's not that hard. <laughs> Should we be giving this away for free? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. All right. That was the ultimate guide to Google ads for 2023 part two. In part one, we went over um, search campaign for your brand, standard shopping. In part two, we went over remarketing. I think uh, let's just talk about a little bit for uh, the display remarketing, um, dynamic remarketing. Oh, okay. uh, we're, what's nice is this will be 10 minutes. It's not going to be a whole whole nother well, situation geared up to wrap up and i had <laughs> no to do i just right. shut you down <laughs> I know. You, know I, you know i can't stop talking the only thing i have for the video it's the only value i bring john <laughs> what's, moment. once the mug comes out we're done john <laughs> <laughs> all right dynamic remarketing whatever you say Go. <laughs> so again um everything that you just did in youtube remarketing <laughs> um but when you create a campaign uh, it's, it's really similar. It's Can I pause sales. you for just a minute? I'm so, so sure. sorry. No. What you just said is really worth meditating on for just a minute. When people skip videos, for instance, if you didn't watch video one, cause you're like, okay, I know how to build a brand campaign and I know standard shopping. And then you're watching video two. And then you feel like there are things that we haven't gone over that haven't been touched categorically. Well, chances are the principles taught in video one will carry over to other things that you want to do. So even if you feel like, oh, I already know that stuff, it might be worth engaging with the content because Google is so consistent on so many levels. So you just learned how to do YouTube remarketing, but within YouTube remarketing, you actually learned a lot about display remarketing too, because the principles carry over. Yeah. Soapbox finished. Thank you for coming to my mini TED talk. <laughs> well, it's like, uh, and I'm probably going to alienate some people here. So my apologies. It's like Jordan Peterson says, so assume the person you're talking to is smarter than you. Mm. Um, and so I think that kind of solves that issue there, which is if you're watching a video, you're like, Hey, I kind of know that just watch. Um, even if you find it's, I mean, it's free content here. Um, if you find one or two things that helps you or helps your client, why not? I right. mean, that's, you know, that's your job. So yeah, I, I like that. It's, it's, you know, the principles that you're learning, if you don't made it, if you didn't make it this far into the video, you know, maybe you didn't know that, oh, I can actually use that same situation for dynamic marketing. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's just the thing is you can use it um, because it is the ultimate guide. I'm just going to share a screen, sales, purchases, display, um, you know, our business address here. Um, actually, yeah, so here. Uh, again, very similar. Choose your location, choose your targeting, more settings here. Um, and then you'll see dynamic ads. Uh, oops, I don't know why that did that. Dynamic ads, yes. Use your dynamic ads, select the proper feed, and then continue on with everything. Everything else is going to be the same. You already know your bids and budgets. The targeting is the same as YouTube. Um, you already built your audience. Your ads, again, the ad creation is fairly simple. You can use, this is the dynamic marketing, so build your ad headline. I mean, it's just basically URL business name. That's it. Like, there's really no ad copy that you're going to have to worry about too much with dynamic marketing. Use your brand campaign if you like here. Um, dynamic marketing is fairly automated. Dynamic marketing is simply going to show the ad of the product that they are interested in with in few parameters. They spent the most amount of time looking at it. They exited your website looking at that product page or they added it to the cart and maybe they buy, bought or maybe they even didn't buy. That's why you exclude those converters as well. So, but everything else that, that we talked about is very, um, it's very simple. It carries right over. Um, 
but yeah, I just want to make, make mention that all that stuff here, when you build your remarketing audiences and you understand the methodology and you understand your, your, your timeline, you understand your budget, you understand how much cost per click and how much clicks per day for your audience size, all that stuff carries right into dynamic marketing, but it works. You can now launch two really powerful campaigns. And now I'm seeing your ads all over websites. I'm seeing you all over YouTube and you don't have to spend too much money to do so. This is part two. <laughs> now I'm done. <laughs> Uh, so in part two, we went over remarketing. In part one, we went over standard shopping and um, search campaigns for brand. What are we going over in part three? We're going to build um, a search campaign. Um, as we did, we did brand. Um, we, did, we did brand, standard shopping. We did YouTube marketing. We did dynamic marketing. We're going to build a non-brand search campaign. Um, we're going to talk about uh, some of the variations of broad match, phrase match, exact match how the overlap with other campaign types, when you should be worried that they will just cannibalize each other, how many new broad search campaigns, or sorry, search keywords you would like versus if you were doing a well-diversified exact match, are Skag's dead? Spoiler, yes. Um, <laughs> and so a whole bunch of stuff that we're Spoiler, just going to yes, talk about. they've been dead. We don't know why we have to keep having this conversation. <laughs> Dude, I did, I did 12 campaign audits the other day. Um, I was just running a little bit behind. And I think four of them had either skags or like hyper segmented campaign types and i'm just like what are you doing like <laughs> how do you think this is still going to work here's a good one i i would love if someone could do this um uh, in in if you're watching this video if you're running skags choose one of your single keyword ad groups keywords go into tools and go into ad preview and diagnosis paste that keyword inside of the ad preview diagnosis for your geography that it would show up in and a see if you're showing up and b see if google says we found seven keywords that match that search term and that's when that will prove to you that skags is dead conversion based spinning strategy is going to be user based not keyword based well it's like building those sec it's like building those um uh sequences like i know that this person needs to see these three ads well same as skag i know that yeah. this person is going to type this exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, and then, and then wait 22 days before they contact me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool stuff. So funny. You know, nothing. Exactly. Skag people. Cool. Well, stick around. Thank you for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe. If you want somebody to help you with Google ads, you know who to call. Ghostbusters. Oh, <laughs> us, Russ. That's right. Us. And then <laughs> Busters. <laughs> awesome. Now, what's funny is this whole account looks like absolute crap, but that's okay. Um, the last 30 days, we spent 125 grand to make 288. I mean, that's not bad, but that's because the like branded is 80K. These mm -hmm. are just, you know, 150, 388, 127, 86. We're, we get $12 conversions sometimes.